Newness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, my dear friends. I hope and trust I find you well. For this morning, I have decided that we have a devotional under the title, Dealing with Rejection When God Says No. You come with me to the book of Deuteronomy and let us hear what the word of God says. At chapter 3, we begin at verse number 23. It reads as follows. At that time, I begged the Lord, Lord God, you have begun to show your greatness and power to your servant. For what God is there in heaven and on earth, who can perform deeds and mighty acts like yours? Please let me cross over and see the beautiful land on the other side of the Jordan, that good hill country and Lebanon. But... The Lord was angry with me on account of you and would not listen to me. The Lord said to me, That's enough. Do not speak to me again about this matter. Verse 27, as we come to an end, Go to the top of Pisgah and look to the west, north, south, and east, and see it with your own eyes, for you will not cross this Jordan. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of calling upon your name. Uh, dear Father, we stand in the need of prayer with our petitions. I will pray, dear Lord, that you may give us that which is befitting of us. Do not deny us that which is to help us to enter your kingdom as we go into your word to learn about your no statements. Give us the patience to understand where you're coming from. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen. My good friends, just allow me to raise five points before you get into your working week. And as I have already titled, there comes a time, point number one, when we have to beg for something, where you have to ask for something. But when your life depends on it, there is a transition between asking and begging. When you now have to beg, your life depends upon it. Moses finds himself at the brink of the River Jordan. For him to cross over into the Promised Land is an extension of life. So when Moses says, Lord, may I cross over the River Jordan and see the Promised Land, he is not just asking for a change of his physical position, but he is also ask, asking that his life may be extended. Are you going to find yourself this week begging your life, your reputation, your experience will depend on that. It is a possi possibility that when we ask, there is a chance we may get a no. Some of us are going to make our leave applications and no may come. Some of us will be requesting to step out and go into town and no may come. Some of us may ask for a deadline to be extended and move further along and no can come. Expect this in the workspace. When you ask, it does not follow that the answer should always be a yes. In spiritual matters, when you pray, expect that the answer can also be a no. You're begging the Lord and you are in tears and you say, Lord, please may I have this. And the Lord still says no, or he remains silent. Such is a reality that we're going to meet during this week. I hope you are prepared for it as we derive more lessons from the word of God. Point number two, Moses says to God, Lord, I have only begun to see how great and powerful a God you are. Take not, it has been about 40 years of journeying through the wilderness. And Moses says, I have only begun. After 40 years, Moses is still discovering the messes and the newness and the power of God. I do not know how old you are. But after 40 years, can you believe it? Moses says, I'm only beginning. Have you been working with God for the past 40 years? If not, you have not even begun. There is still more that we can discover about the Lord. And may I challenge you, this week, what new thing are you going to discover about God? Are you going to learn something new? Are you going to appreciate something differently that you didn't know about God? Moses gives us this challenge and he says, even after 40 years of walking with the Lord, you would not have exhausted who he is. There is still something to be discovered in the Lord and it is never too late to start 
and you'll never exhaust his newness. He is a God we can never fully understand, but he's a God we can always appreciate. Point number three, God has been merciful to Moses. God has been kind to Moses. Is it possible that Moses is beginning to take God for granted? As he asks, and he says, Lord, may I cross over, over the river Jordan. Listen to how God answers him. God responds at verse 26. He starts by giving us a response. And he says, but the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not listen to me. Now we serve a God who is emotional. God does get angry. And when he gets angry, like the rest of us, we do not listen very well when we are angry. God says, I am angry with you because of what you did. Because of that deed, I am still angry with you. And he told him straight up at the wilderness of Zin, at the Kadesh incident, you did not represent me aright, Moses, and I am angry with you. But that, that doesn't mean we're not friends anymore. That doesn't mean I do not love you, but I'm still angry. Just like people who are in a relationship, they do get angry even though they still love each other. Moses and God are the best of buddies. But God says, because of what you did, I am angry at you. Now, I am not going to listen to you, but this does not mean, let's go back to our communication a bit. Listening and hearing are two different terminologies. Here is just the sensory use. God hears, but for us to say someone has listened to us, there must be a corresponding response. So the message must be conveyed in one direction and feedback must come corresponding to the message that has gone through. Now Moses has requested, Lord, may I cross over, to the, over the river Jordan. But God now says, Moses, on this aspect, you are not going to cross over. I am not going to entertain this request. There comes a time when we are not going to get what we are asking for. Not because God cannot give it to us, but because we have done wrong. God is angry. We have disobeyed him. Our obedience is what leads our messages to receiving a corresponding feedback. God says to Moses, I am angry with you. And he says, I will not listen to you. Point number four. I love the way God now closes this case. And he says, do not talk to me again on this matter. I love the way the Lord does not leave Moses hanging or in suspense. There's some of us, especially in positions of leadership, someone has put in a request, you remain silent. Someone has put in a request, you don't give feedback. Someone has put in a request, you want them to keep knocking at your door so that they keep asking and begging indefinitely. But God does not put Moses in this position. He says, as far as this matter is concerned, we are done, Moses. Finish and Clara, it's over. We are not going to discuss it again. My answer is clear. The Bible even says, let your yes be a yes and let your no be a no. God is categoric in responding to Moses and he makes sure he doesn't leave him in suspense. Moses, you are not going there. Even though you are my friend, even though we talk to each other face to face, I will not make an exception. And God is not going to make an exception with us, my dear friends, when we cross his path. He shall set a line and say, you will not cross this line. In spite of how we have interacted in the past. When number five, as we come to an end, he says, Moses, because you have asked to cross over and I have said no, I am going to then give you a counter offer. Consolation, go up the mountain of Pisgah. When you get to the top of Mount Pisgah, check your north, east, west, south, view the land with your own eyes. That's the best I can give you. I love the way God acts and behaves around Moses. He denies him one thing, but he gives him consolation. The Lord does not make us walk away empty-handed. We may not cross the River Jordan, but he will allow us to experience it. He will allow us to envision what he has in store for us. If only we can do that which he wants us to do. My dear friends, rejection is real. We're going to make requests and they may not be honored. As we go out, when we are in positions to say no, I hope you can give consolation to those whom you are going to deny a request. And when we put in our request, chances are we may get a yes or a no. Until you meet again next Monday, 
Blessings and Peace.